Welcome to week two of the Data Talks Club Data Engineering Zoom Camp. My name is Matt, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about orchestration this week. Um, and that is how you can orchestrate your data workflows, specifically using Mage. Obviously, I'll provide a bit of a background on what orchestration is, why it's important, and what features a good orchestrator should have. Um, then we're going to dive in to Mage, um, walk through some sample pipelines, some really fun projects. I think it'll be a good time. Hopefully, uh, we'll have some fun. But first, I'm going to get started with kind of a little bit about me so you understand my background, uh, how I've came to work in data engineering, um, and, and what we're going to discuss. So uh, jumping right into it, um, I used to work in analytics. I started in analytics engineering and product analytics at a few um, awesome SaaS companies. Kind of moved into data engineering over the last few years, and now I do DevRel developer relations, and some other stuff at Mage. I do a lot of technical writing, some course creation, things of that nature. It's really fun. Um, in my free time, I like rock climbing. I like staying fit. Uh, I do a pretty good cactus impression, <laughs> as you can see there. Um, and I live in the Bay Area of the United States in California. Um, so yeah, uh, if you want to connect on LinkedIn, reach out to me. I, I have a newsletter where I write uh, about data and analytics and some other life stuff on a weekly cadence. Um, but I'd love to stay in touch. So. Next, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we're going to build in this course. So um, it's kind of a fancy diagram, but I think the outputs are going to be pretty simple. Um, so we're going to be using Docker, which is a containerization service. I think you've used it a bit earlier in this course. Um, but Mage and uh, Postgres database are going to run in this Docker environment. And for our final project, we're going to take a data set. It's a New York yellow taxi cab data set, as illustrated by that taxi there. Um, and then we're going to do some transformations on it. We're going to load it to Postgres. Um, we're going to load it to Google Cloud Storage, since that's sort of a uh, important part of data engineering workflows. Um, and then we're going to perform some more transformation using uh, some really cool open source tools like Pandas, Apache Arrow, um, just some SQL, uh, and then load it to Google BigQuery. And we're going to walk through how to set up Google Cloud uh, Storage and BigQuery um, and everything you need for this course later. Um, so. We're, we're extracting, transforming, and loading data to multiple sources. That's kind of data engineering in a nutshell. I think this is going to prepare you to create some really cool projects um, and dive deeper uh, in the concepts of orchestration and data transformation. Um, but first, I think we need to take a step back and talk about what orchestration is, because if you're in this course, you might be a little new to things. Um, so. Um, what is orchestration? Well, as I just kind of discussed, right, a large part of data engineering is extracting, transforming, loading data between all these different sources. And so when I say orchestration, I'm defining that as a process of dependency management facilitated through automation. And automation is the key piece here because um, we're engineers, right? Like we don't do things. <laughs> we do, the idea is to minimize manual work. Now, Things will, there will always be manual things you'll need to do, and that's just kind of a fact of life um, until AI completely takes over the world. Uh, but a good goal is to automate as many processes as possible, and orchestration is one way to do that. So the data orchestrator really manages scheduling, triggering, monitoring, and even resource allocation for your data engineering workflows. Um, so a bit more about orchestration. Every workflow requires this sequential steps. So if you think about a process, okay, well, I'm going to take data from X, I'm going to clean it, transform it, move it to Y, and then there are downstream processes that I'm going to kick off that depend on that. There is a sequence of actions that you need to take in a particular order to accomplish that workflow. Um, and so a good analogy, right, is like if you're making a good cup of coffee, if you have your French press um, and you heat the water after you make the French press, right? You're going to have a cold cup of coffee. Nobody wants that, so you're going to be disappointed, right? Um, in the same way, if you're doing transformations out of order, if you're transforming data before you extract it, um, the data is going to be wrong in the end, so that's not good. Um, and so in these s examples here, when I say steps, we call those tasks or blocks in, in mage lingo uh, in data transformations. And when I say workflows, um, we often would call that a DAG or a pipeline in data engineering speak. And so there's a really good graphic uh, from the fundamentals of data engineering. If you haven't read that book, I highly recommend it. There's a link here uh, to it on O'Reilly Media. Um, Matt and Joe characterize the data engineering life cycle through some different terms, generation, storage, but really you can think about the top half of this image is just extract, transform, load. And then there are undercurrents to that, that process, right? And orchestration is one of the undercurrents. 
And so when we say orchestration is an undercurrent, that means it happens throughout the entire life cycle of data engineering. That is, orchestration is kind of key to the entire process of building data engineering pipelines. Um, and so it's really important to have a good orchestrator, to have a good solution that fits your use case, use case well. And here's where I'll call out that the right solution, there is no perfect solution first. And the right solution for your use case, for your problem, might be different than somebody else or a different company, et cetera. So a big part of being an engineer, a big part of being a professional is figuring out how your situation is different how your situation is unique, and then going out and doing the research to make sure you find the right solution. Obviously, I work at Mage. Um, I'm, we're going to talk about Mage in this course. We're going to use Mage for this project. But there are also a number of other really good data engineering solutions out there, a lot of really good orchestration and transformation solutions out there, and Mage might not be the right one for you. So I would really love for you to consider Mage. I think it's the best tool out there today. Um, that being said, it might not be the best tool for you, and I just want to acknowledge that up front. So um, we can now dive into sort of what a good solution does look like. And uh, a good orchestrator handles a lot of stuff. It's actually a pretty challenging uh, <laughs> field because there are so many things you have to do right. So first, um, a good orchestrator handles workflow management. They define, schedule, manage workflows efficiently. They ensure tasks are executed in the right order, um, and it manages dependencies, as we've kind of discussed. Second, automation. We already kind of talked about this. Engineers should be trying to automate as much as possible. Um, you need to make sure that your orchestration solution uh, is really good at automating things. Third, uh, error handling and recovery. So things break. <laughs> things don't work the way they're supposed to all the time. Orchestrators need to come up with built-in solutions for handling errors, um, conditional logic, branching, uh, and retrying failed tasks. Um, recovery. Things are going to break, right? We might lose data. There needs to be a way to backfill um, missing data. There needs to be a way to recover lost data. Orchestrators can handle in those situations. Uh, monitoring and alerting. Ideally, an orchestrator, if a pipeline fails or if those retries do have to happen, will send you some sort of notification or has the capability to do that at least. Um, resource optimization. If your orchestrator is managing where jobs are executed, uh, ideally, it would play some role in optimizing the best route for that execution. So resource optimization is another good uh, characteristic to look for in an orchestrator. Observability. Um, a very important piece of data engineering is having visibility into every part of the data pipeline. And because orchestrators are an undercurrent and they help manage the entire process from start to finish, um, they're going to be very important for observability and ideally would come with built-in observability functionality. Uh, debugging is a part of observability and your orchestrator should let you debug your data pipelines very easily. Uh, lastly, because it has these observability debugging uh, functionalities and it's a part, an undercurrent of the entire process, ideally your orchestrator should help you with compliance or auditing uh, for your data engineering workflows. Um, and I think it's really, I think this is a really important concept to talk about this a lot. A good orchestrator prioritizes developer experience. So what do I mean when I say that? Well, I define developer experience and I took this from a research paper that's linked in this presentation to have three components flow state, feedback loops, and cognitive load. And so flow state, people talk about flow state a lot. It's kind of like that feeling of flow, uh, you know, almost effortless development. Maybe you've been there, maybe you've experienced it with one of your passions or hobbies like art or dance or music. Uh, hopefully you've experienced it with engineering and work. Um, but if you're constantly needing to switch between tools, you don't have a very good flow. Uh, feedback loops, the ability to iterate quickly, to fail fast, to build really cool stuff and get tangible feedback immediately, um, also very important. And cognitive load. Uh, in the tools you're working with, are you ending your day thinking, man, that was really hard, I had to like manage all this stuff in my brain, like I have a pounding headache, or does it kind of feel effortless? Um, and so one of my favorite <laughs> sort of memes, LinkedIn posts, whatever, it comes from Matt Martin here who says, Probably the easiest way to stop a local airflow instance is to reboot your computer. Not a good developer experience if to stop development, you just have to turn your machine off. Um, so, you know, what we're looking for in a good orchestrator is this thing that accomplishes all of the data engineering tasks that I mentioned earlier, but also that facilitates rapid 
and almost seamless development of awesome data pipelines. Um, and so one more analogy, one, one that I really like is that a good orchestrator is sort of like a conductor. You know, you have this orchestra that might be your data engineering process uh, or processes, um, your data engineering workflows, and the orchestrator is kind of keeping everything in check. It's keeping an eye on everything. It understands sort of the symphony that you got going on. Um, and it's able to properly adjust maybe the tempo, uh, maybe the, you know, the, the volume, all these different things to make sure that your data workflows um, op you know, operate smoothly and, and get the desired outcomes that you're looking for. Um, so that's kind of all I have for what orchestration is. If you're looking for other resources, I would highly recommend Matt and Joe's book, The Fundamentals of Data Engineering. There are a bunch of other really good books out there, a bunch of really good free resources. I think a great place to start is just by going to Slack community like Data Talks Club, um, going on Google, looking things up, going on Reddit, uh, just finding all you can about data engineering um, and reading as much as possible. And through that, you'll sort of find these little veins and uh, similarities, and that'll help you learn. That's how we learn, and that's uh, you know why you're here in uh, a course like this. So um, that's it for sort of what orchestration is. Up next is going to be what Mage is, and then we'll talk more about the project that I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, intro. So um, again, I'm Matt. I'm looking forward to this this course um, and this this section of the Data and Talks Club Zoom Camp. Um, I think it's going to be a fun week, and uh, can't wait to see you in the next video. Peace.